you wash this? Mm, sure. Thanks. What would you say if I told you that two redonkulously large mushrooms popped up in our home site last night? Really? Not even kidding. <laughs> Look at that. Really? Yeah. That's so funny. That happened. What the heck? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> they like grew overnight. Yeah, they came out of nowhere. Those weren't there yesterday. Wow. We need to put like a night so time lapse out here and yeah, keep right. an eye on what's going on. Yeah. Are they edible? <clears throat> I don't think Maybe so. they're morels. I don't think so. They don't look like morels. <laughs> <laughs> Should we leave them? I would. What do you think? I'll just leave them. So we got a little R&R &R in last night, spent a little time with some good friends by the creek, had a few beverages and talked about building stuff. Turns out we're not the only one building stuff and having a lot of setbacks. <laughs> so it made us feel better about ourselves apparently. So this morning, we're gonna try today to put in about a half day because the forecast for today says 95 degrees and that's for the local area, which our property is about 10 degrees hotter. So we're looking at 105. Melissa and I talked for a couple hours last night trying to figure out how we can make this home build more tolerable. It's been an extremely hot summer following an extremely cold and long winter. Our timing on this home build is pretty poor. So we're trying to kind of mix things up to try to find a way because we've been putting in too many hours and the heat is, has been the biggest issue. It just really clouds your thinking. It makes everything more difficult. So we're trying to find, while not not working, trying to find a way to make productivity go up and happiness and enjoyment go up. So let's try four hours today. Let's see where we're at around noon and see what the progress looks like. Yesterday, we finished this row of block. What we need to do, a couple of things. One, I wanna test fit the next row of block. If you can see really closely, this row of block starts gapping at the top. That's because these, these blocks are actually going apart at the top. And it's kind of frustrating. I haven't figured out what we're doing that causes that. But we have to get it resolved because we have five more rows of block to go above these three. Any of those issues are just gonna magnify. Once I feel confident that we've got this kind of figured out, we learned this from the first row. Don't glue and screw anything until you check to make sure the next row is gonna fit. I think the issue actually starts here at the buttress, and I'm not even 100% sure why. I feel like this buttress is off this way by one eighth of an inch, which is really easy to do because you're severing the ties right there. So I need to spend some time just test fitting blocks and trying to find a way to make sure that everything is good to go on this row. Then, this row, pretty simple row, zip tie it to the row below. There's no rebar or anything in there. But we do need to begin setting up our bracing system and that's probably gonna take the majority of our time today. I'm a little concerned that this bracing system isn't going to work for us. We're going to test it today and I'll kind of walk through some of the struggles and here's hoping it works good. Who knows anything about mushrooms? Are these gonna shrivel up as soon as the sun hits them? They've only got about six inches of shade left to go. So I've done just a little bit of test fitting in the trouble areas. And the good news is that these blocks, they have a tiny bit of movement in the joint. If these keys don't line up perfectly, usually you can kind of just give a gentle nudge one way or the other, and you can get it close enough to get the block to seat. I always wonder, like, I would think that as you get higher and higher, these small gaps are gonna become more and more important because once you get to the top, your wall could shape like this if you're not careful. I did yesterday take a level around and check in these little valleys for level crossways and it looked really good. Checked across the corners, looked really good. And then I did a plumb check, you know, along this face and that face and everything's plumb. So we're doing pretty good. That problem spot over there is probably the one that I was worried about the most. There's a little gap right there. That gap follows the footing. So there's a tiny little lip or something on the footing right there that's making that block wanna climb. And we've had to kind of average it out through all these subsequent blocks, which is why we end up with gaps, um, like right there. I mean, that's actually not a gap, that's a shadow, but we end up with those gaps and we have to find a way to get these blocks to fit. Since I've test fitted those trouble areas, I know I'm not out of the woods yet, but I think we're okay to start zip tying it's only been a couple of days, so this is still fresh in my mind. And that is, don't glue, screw, or zip tie anything until it's good to go. 
So I'm gonna probably have problems with this row and it's gonna become more and more difficult to stack these blocks. We knew this time was coming, but these blocks cannot be stacked from the ground now. We're having to change up our strategy. This is going to be quite difficult. In my mind, it would be ideal to put the drainage in here and backfill this and give ourselves a level walking surface around these blocks. But I don't think we should backfill against the block out of fear that they could get bumped and then it would be quite a nightmare to try to adjust. So it's better to keep them exposed. So for the time being, I'm gonna just have to use kind of creative scaffolding to get access to these areas. Once we get up above a certain, I mean, maybe one more row, it's time to use the ladder. Like we're not, we're not even gonna be able to reach it with scaffolding. So things are gonna slow down at this point. And on top of that, with the bracing system, reaching to these upper heights is gonna become somewhat precarious. This wall is 10 feet, eight inches from the top of that footing. This one is 12 feet because it has an additional row of block. So we're gonna have to get some tall ladders, which means we're gonna have to find a way to get this ground to be more stable. Kind of had this theory that if I kind of went did multiple steps as I went it would keep me from having to move the ladder a whole bunch it turns out the screws that we have are way too long to install the cam lock part of the zont system so that means a supply run I think to just keep energy high and productivity high today I'm gonna to not get distracted by supply runs so I think today I'll focus on just getting the zip tying done between the two rows and I may try to explore a little bit uh, putting the wire that they recommend through the block and tying it around you're supposed to secure that to the bracing only their instructions are for vertical bracing and we're using a horizontal bracing system so Maybe if I can work the bugs out on this stuff today, maybe tomorrow will be more productive. just remembered that I had a bunch of like one inch T25 Torx screws and I dug them out and sure enough there's probably enough to get a row of bracing on.
working right along. So this is called a whaler, and up until now we've just talked about it and used hand signals. And the job of this board is to apply an even force across this wall. So if I push here, in theory, it's pushing also down there. The goal, of course, is to provide a straightening effect on the wall. So these wires we put through here secure to the whaler and that makes it so that in theory, which you're not supposed to do, but in theory you could push push or pull this wall to bring it plumb prior and during the pour. And then back here we have the first strong back and this system uses a cam lock to tighten the strong back to the whaler and this cam lock as you turn it tightens this board. My fears were confirmed. In the documentation, they want seven inches of footing available. Three and a half is for the whaler, and three and a half for the strong back. And they want us to attach a plate here to the footing, straight to the footing, so that you can attach the strong back to the plate. Well, maybe they didn't consider every option because in most places we have about four inches, give or take, of footing available. So as you can see, we only have one inch of this board sitting on the footing. So I have a couple of choices. I think I can notch this board out so that it sits down on the ground, but even that's not very ideal because the ledge that it's sitting on here is the ledge from the forms where it the concrete went underneath the forms. I was thinking that if I put like a Simpson bracket or something around each one of these and attach the Simpson to the concrete, and to the strong back, that would be a pretty adequate solution. So far, we've learned a lot about how the drawings that people use are often cartoons because they're not real world scenarios. They're like, okay, this is how the engineer built this system, go. And pretty much as soon as you start applying a system to your job site, everything on the drawing goes out the window and you start to have to really work your brain to find a way. So next, to make this system complete, we're going to be attaching a second strong back diagonally down to the ground here. And that's where the zuckle or turnbuckle comes in. And that turnbuckle will allow us to push and pull this wall to make very fine adjustments. It also triangulates that brace. And later on, we're going to have to build scaffolding on these strong backs. And that scaffolding is what we will walk on during the pour for the walls. If you're thinking, have you got that all figured out? And the answer is no. I haven't figured all this stuff out yet. To add insult to injury, the lumber that I purchased for our whalers is 14 feet. I don't know where on the earth I got 14 feet from. I think they should have been 12 footers. I have no idea. So we're going to have to scab a piece from here to here and then of course affix it to this uh, cam lock. That's understandable anytime you build whalers like this, even on regular concrete forms, you do a lot of scabbing because your boards are just never the right length. And you just use what you have and make it work. The sun is getting very close over here. My shade is disappearing. That usually means it's about time to wrap it up on a short day. But before we wrap it up, I forgot to check on our mushroom friends. Oof, they are not doing well. Hey little guys. I feel ya. Yeah, you're shriveling up, huh? Oof, already crunchy. Before I keep going though, I'd like to get a beverage. And I kinda wanted to check on this cooler. So this milk has been in here for four days. <clears throat> this ice has been in here for a little over 24 hours. And there's another bag of ice in the bottom here. That ice has been in here for four days in this cooler. I'm really happy we made this investment because we keep the cooler full of drinks and things, and it's always in the back of the pickup, which makes it really convenient. I don't have to go in and harass Alyssa, and I don't have to go without. I just realized that we probably better give you guys this view as much as we can in the next couple of days because pretty soon you can't even see the top of that board and I'm behind the house. 
the walls are going to be about this high and we won't be able to see in there with the camera anymore. So hopefully you enjoy this angle. Well, a half a day turned into almost an entire day, but everything's going okay. We're having the same issues with the same areas over and over and over. But I think I might have come up with a method to use wire to tighten the joints on some of the blocks. I don't know, we'll have to try more tomorrow. The heat is really starting to build. It's getting very hot, which makes thinking very difficult and problem solving. So, pretty good stopping point. This row needs some work tomorrow morning to finish it up. We are one half of the way up the walls, so we've got four rows to go. Alyssa came out and helped me this afternoon, which I really appreciate, helped me get the first row of whalers on. A couple more rows, I think three rows actually, and then we put another set of whalers on. So tomorrow's gonna be busy. Hopefully we get the 20 degree cooling that they promised us or they forecast us, whatever. For now, I think we're off to the river to enjoy some coolness and some fellowship with good friends. See you guys tomorrow. Hey, what the heck? Alyssa!